welcome to Mrs E English Skills. I'm Mrs E and today we're looking at paragraphs. So what are we going to look at today? Well there's some questions that we need to ask and questions that we'll try to answer in this video. Number one, how do you structure a paragraph or how do you write a paragraph? Is there a structure? Well there is a structure and we will be looking at that today. Number two, how long should a paragraph be? Do you have any idea? Well, how long is a piece of string? If a paragraph is about one topic, it just depends how long that topic is. But if you've written a whole page of one paragraph, it's likely you will need to split that at some point. And finally, how do you know when to change to a new paragraph? So we will look at when this should happen and hopefully answering these questions will help you in your own writing. Firstly, why do we use paragraphs? Well, there are reasons, one being in order for us to organise our writing into separate topics. This allows our reader to know when we've moved on to something different. It also allows us to have a beginning, middle and end and think about a logical structure to our writing. If we're writing to persuade, we may want to build up to our main argument in order to fully convince our readers. Paragraphs also avoid confusion for our readers. They know where they're up to, as I said before, they know when they've finished one topic and when they've gone on to another. And paragraphs also split our writing into manageable chunks. This makes it easy for the readers to digest. If it was a full page of writing without breaks, this is very difficult to read. This is extremely hard to read because we might lose our place. We might get the lines confused. And also we'll struggle to know when we've moved from one topic to another. I'm going to read a well paragraphed letter. Read along with me and see if you can identify the main topic in each paragraph. The paragraphs are separated using a complete empty line. Dear Amanda, I hope you're enjoying your time off work. I heard you were using the time to renovate your apartment. I hope this is going well. My new college course is going well. I got a distinction on my first assignment, so I was really pleased with that. Also, my new tutors are really nice and supportive. I think I will stay for the second year. Next Friday, I am going away to Wales for the weekend. I love how peaceful and calm it is in the Welsh countryside. I have booked a little cottage in the mountains and I'm hoping to spend some time meditating and reading. That's the plan anyway. If you have some time off in the summer, I can come and visit you. My course finishes on the 12th of June, so let me know if we can arrange something. Take care, Claire. Pause this video to see if you can identify the main topic in each paragraph. OK, let's look at the main topics. So in paragraph one, this was all about Amanda's time off work. Paragraph two was telling us about the college course. Paragraph three was talking about the visit to Wales for the weekend. And paragraph four was talking about the impending visit. How did you do? Did you notice that the topics are introduced in the first sentence? This is not a mistake and is often the case. And that's why we call the first sentence of a paragraph the topic sentence. What do you notice about the last sentence in each paragraph? I hope this is going well. I think I will stay for the second year. That's the plan anyway. Let me know if we can arrange something. 
These all sum up or finish off the paragraphs. It allows us to know we have finished talking about that topic and we're going to move on to something new. On the next slide, we're going to look at the structure of a paragraph. So we'll discuss this in more detail. So how do you structure a paragraph? I've already talked about the topic sentence. This sets the scene and tells the reader what the paragraph is going to be about. After this, you would add development sentences. These will add facts, add details, give examples, describe something. Basically, they will go into more detail about the topic that you've just introduced. Finally, the last element is a concluding sentence. And this would possibly restate the topic in a different way, link to the next paragraph or summarise to bring it to a close. And we saw this on the previous slide. This tends to be the part of the paragraph most people miss out. And without it, your writing will lack flow and it will just be chunks of information and not a journey of writing. If you struggle with paragraphing, follow this structure. It will not only help your paragraphs have a beginning, middle and end and flow nicely, but it will also let you know when to swap to a new paragraph because you know or you will know that you've just written your concluding sentence. One way you could link to another paragraph is by kind of introducing the topic in your concluding sentence. For example, if I had written a paragraph about why I love the colour yellow, my last sentence might be, that is why I prefer the colour yellow to the colour blue, which I hate. My next paragraph could be all about why I hate the colour blue. I don't hate the colour blue, by the way. That was just a hypothetical. Let's look at an example. For the topic sentence I have written, it was a fresh morning in the mountains. For my development sentences, the sky was grey and there was a slight chill to the air. The leaves on the trees had started to change colour to beautiful reds, browns and yellows. It wouldn't be long until the ground crunched with frost and the snow began to fall. Finally, my concluding sentence. It was mornings like these that she loved the best. Here we have a complete paragraph, just separated into its different components. This is the paragraph not separated. We still have the topic sentence, development sentences and concluding sentence, but this is how it would appear. So how do we separate our paragraphs? Well, they need to be separated and we can do it by either leaving a complete empty line between each paragraphs, usually when we're typing, but it can be when we're handwriting as well, or indent from the margin, the first line of your paragraph, apart from the first paragraph of a piece of writing, which should stay on the margin. This tends to be the case when we're handwriting and it's the way I was taught a long time ago when I was in school. Our final question then, when should we start a new paragraph? Well, hopefully by now you know we start a new paragraph when you start a new topic when you write your next topic sentence. You also start a new paragraph if you change time and place. If you're writing a diary entry or a story and you move from one scene, say at the school gates in the morning, to another scene when you get back home later that afternoon, these should be in separate paragraphs. As well as this, if you start talking about something that happened in the evening and then something that happened the next morning. This is a change of time, so we would change our paragraphs. Lastly, if you're writing speech and you change the speaker. This will be when you're writing a story and you have something called dialogue. 
Dialogue is the conversation between two characters in a story. So when someone is openly speaking, one character might say hello and another character might say hello in response. Because they are different characters, each piece of speech from a different character would be in a whole new paragraph. So if John says hello and Kate says how are you, these would be two separate paragraphs and this helps avoid confusion for your reader about who is speaking and avoid the necessity to write he said, she said, John said, Kate said. We'll look at this more when we are looking at creative writing, story writing and in more detail at dialogue in another video. Now we know about paragraphing, how to structure a paragraph, when to swap to a new paragraph, see if you can have a go at this task. I'm about to read the minutes of a meeting where the writer has forgotten how to use paragraphs. As I'm reading, see if you can spot when each new paragraph should begin. Three estimates have now been received for the repair of the roof. They range from £8,000 to £11,000. It was decided that the secretary should write to all three contractors and ask if it was possible to view examples of each firm's work. Vandalism has become an increasing problem at the community room this summer. Last week, two windows were broken and a drain pipe damaged. The caretaker saw the vandals running away and phoned the police. Sergeant Cotton, our community policeman, has promised to do his best to ensure that police patrol cars visit the area more frequently. The nursery school organiser has asked the committee if the group can hire the room each Friday morning. At present, the group hire the room each Monday, Tuesday and Thursday during term time from 8am to 1pm. It is planned to hold a jumble sale in the community room on Saturday, August the 11th. All proceeds will go to the roof repair fund. Arrangements for this event will be discussed at the next meeting. Can you identify where each new paragraph should begin? There should be four paragraphs in total. Can you write down the topic of each paragraph? Pause this video to have a go at this task before I reveal the answers. Okay, let's look at the answers. Paragraph one. This was all about the repair of the roof or the estimates or the costs. Paragraph two was all about vandalism. Paragraph three. This was all about the room hire or the nursery school hiring the room. And did you spot paragraph four? If you did, well spotted, because this isn't a very good way of starting a paragraph. However, it is a new topic and it's all about a jumble sale. How did you do? Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, be sure to subscribe, like and share. Check out my other videos to keep improving your English. And if you have any questions regarding the content of this video, just pop them in the comments below. I'm Mrs E and I'll see you soon.